Hi, welcome back. Uh, in this session, we will study about the uh, Azure VM, the challenges or the common issues when deploying a VM, uh, connecting to a VM, how exactly we can connect to a VM, and what are the challenges we faced uh, when we connect to a VM, especially to a Windows VM, and the difference between the Gen 1 and Gen 2 VM. So let me go back to the portal. So on this portal, uh, I will first go and create a VM a virtual machine. And while creating, what exactly I want to show you is, yeah, so as you see here, there is a subscription here and uh, we create a resource group or you select a resource group. So let me select an existing resource group and the virtual machine, I will give some name here, uh, say test VM. Now I can select a, a, a specific region where exactly you want to create this VM machine. And the challenge what we face here is in that region, there may be a quota, there may be a capacity where you cannot go uh, uh, after, uh, like you cannot go within or you cannot go uh, beyond the quota which is assigned to you. So what I mean by this is, if you see here, there are different regions. Now, if I go to US East, uh, US East US, and let me go and see what is the quota here. So let me go to the quota part and let's see uh, what is the quota uh, given here for this region so what we can do here we can go to a subscription to see what is the quota limit here so you can go to your home page and you can select the subscription here and see and select the subscription so i have one subscription here and you can have multiple subscriptions so we can go here and see it uh, usage plus quota so now i can go here and you will see specifically uh, to my computer engine okay so this is my computer which basically which links to your uh, the virtual machine so like I, like I want to see the quota here so this is giving me for all the uh, so no quotas are available so let me see uh, what i can see for us region so east us for example and see let's see what it says Okay, so right now I'm not using any, so the reason here is it's not giving me any details because I'm not using any of the VMs and uh, uh, it's it's not, uh, it's not, that's the reason it's not coming up anything here. So let's first go and spin up a, a VM machine and let's see if it uh, shows here the, the quota retail. So let me go and spin up a virtual machine here. So this is one of the issue which you can face. So for example, say the quota is uh, 10 cores, uh, 10 cores you can use for East uh, US region. And now after you have used the 10 cores and you're trying to again uh, spin up a machine, a VM machine, uh, which is more than 10 cores. Uh, for example, say uh, you already have two machines and each machine is having, for example, say four core, four core, which is eight core, and you have one more machine, which is two core. So you have already consumed the 10 cores here. Now, if you want to again put a, a two core machine up and running in the East US region, you will you would not be able to spin up there and uh, the reason is because you already have a, a quota of 10 uh, of the uh, 10 cores and you've already consumed that so you cannot go beyond that that's one of the that's one of the issue what you can face while uh, spinning up the virtual machine so this is what one thing here so now let's quickly do a virtual machine spin up here so this is my region let me do uh generation one we will talk about the generation one generation two also in this video so we have one cpu one gb 10 uh Okay, this is what it is. And then uh, let me see, uh, I can, okay, this is my ID and this is my password. And why this guy is giving me an error here is, let's see, okay. So the password is an issue. I will just correct the password here. Okay, so now I can go ahead and I can review plus create. So this will take some time. So once this is up and running, I can come back and then again, we will go to the quota part and see if there is anything showing up on that quota screen. So let me come back again once this VM is up and running. So my virtual machine is up and running now. So if you can see here, we have spin up the machine uh, test VM and this machine is right now in the, uh, in the East US region. Okay, so this is, so let me show you, uh, Yeah, so location is East US. Right now we are in the East US machine, uh, East US uh, region. And if you see here, I've just, I'm just using one CPU for the specific uh, machine. Now, now, now let me go back to the subscription. Uh, initially in this subscription, we saw there was no uh, available resources, but right now we can go and see what exactly it says here. Okay, so let me... Yeah, let me go back and see my usage in quotas. And if I go here, 
and if I select my compute here and I will select the East US and this is my East US so okay I selected a wrong one so this is my compute yeah so now if you see here I am using the 10% of my quota so right now I am using the 1 out of 10 so I have 10 cores I am already using the one core here so this is what the quota is so for example if someone is uh, is uh, having some issue uh, spinning up the VM in a specific region then there, there should be a quota for the specific subscription which is limiting you to go and create the or the VMs in this specific region. So now right now what we can do is uh, this is what you can go and then again you can increase the quota here which gives you the capability to go and uh, increase more or uh, spin up more VMs in a specific uh, uh, specific region. So now let's go back and see how we can connect to this. The second part is how to uh, connect to this VM. It's very simple. You just go and click on this connect button and then there is an RDP here. So why we are doing RDP because this is a, a remote desktop protocol to a Windows machine. You just say Windows uh, download RDP uh, file and then this rdp file you just go and connect here now one issue what we face here is uh we just give the name here admin123 and you give your password so sometimes what happens even though your id and password is correct uh, it doesn't allow you so what we can do is we can just add your uh, the ip uh, ip address here so we can say 13 dot this ip is a public ip of this vm of this uh, specific vm what we have connected or what we are trying to connect here uh, so what i do is if i go and do this and then uh, if i add the ip plus my uh, username and the password it should allow me to connect here so if you see this is allowing me to connect here okay i think this this is how it needs um be careful about the slash uh forward slash and hopefully uh 1382 what exactly we are doing it let me see why it doesn't like it okay okay hopefully they should connect it uh let's see how it goes uh hopefully it should connect back and uh, launch the uh, the windows uh, terminal which is a windows server and from there you can directly go in uh, you can go and uh, look into your machine you can go and uh, deploy your workloads and uh, application in that machine so yep here it is spinning up so this is one of the issue where you can face so you just append the ip address with your uh, domain name with your uh, user id and the password and you should be able to log in okay so i will disconnect this i will go back and uh, this is one of the issue what we are facing so what we are trying to include here so we saw what are the challenges or the common issues when deploying a vm so there can be a quota restriction so you have to go and see what is the quota for a specific uh, region second thing connecting to vm so if you're not able to connect to vm even if you're giving a user id and password just make sure you append the ip address public ip address of that vm and second is the difference between gen 1 and gen 2 so what is this is basically we will go and see on the uh, on the windows uh, this this is a azure uh, microsoft uh, uh, document so here if you can see here the difference between gen 2 and gen, uh, gen 1 is generation 1 and generation 2 is in generation 2 if you see it says the boot architecture is uh, used uh, so there is a difference in the boot architecture which helps you to uh, improve the boot time uh, and the installation time in generation 2 this is one of the basic difference between gen 2 and gen 1 so let me go down and show, show you the exact difference if you see here uh, the os disk, uh, disk size is 2 terabyte for generation 1 but if you but you can have uh, more than 2 terabyte in generation 2 and similarly there is a no difference of cost here so even if you're using generation 2 the cost difference is like the price difference is like uh, is almost same there is no difference here yeah if you see here is there is a price difference between gen 1 and gen 2 there is no price difference here so this is a uh, this is the difference between gen 1 and gen 2 and you can also use gen 1 and gen 2 but i think gen 2 is not available in all the regions and maybe if it is available in all the regions there would be a sum of flavors of generation 2 available in those regions some maybe not so this is what we have to exactly uh, when you spin up your uh, VM here, uh, during the uh, during uh, when you when you go and spin up your VM, you can go and uh, see exactly which all generations are uh, available and what you can play around. So now finally, when before you uh, before you go away from this uh, lab, just make sure you delete your uh, virtual machine because again, otherwise you will be charged for this. So hopefully this was useful for you guys and um, made you understand what exactly uh, the issues what we face, how what are the challenges, and how you can go and tackle it and and uh, uh, make sure uh, you can go ahead with those uh, specific changes and uh, hopefully this was helpful for you thanks for watching thanks thanks a lot